That's a piece I really enjoyed playing in high school, and it brought me through some really dark moments. My name is Caswell Makovre, and I went to the Alliance High School. <laughs> I just had to get that out of the way because it somehow had to pop into this conversation. I am a music educator, a composer, a pianist, a trumpet player, and I'm the band leader at Engage. I'd like to tell you a story which makes me very vulnerable, but I'll do my best. It, growing up uh, in primary school, let me just go to this particular incident which I, I would like to talk about. I used to, I used to think I looked like Kanye West. <laughs> I'll tell you where that came from. I, I always was intrigued by music instruments, uh, and being an Adventist, there's only one keyboard in a church, especially in the church that I grew up in. And every lunchtime when I'd go to try and touch the instrument, I'd be chased from the, from the, from the booth, and they'd tell me, watoto hakubaliwi hapa, and I'd just be so sad. So the first time I, 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 heard, I heard some cool piano sounds is due to the person who, to whom I owe my, I call my greatest musical influence, my mother because she did her best to ensure that I was exposed to the best music that I could be. And since we didn't have electronics growing up, it would be her phone's ringtone. And I remember she, when she bought a Nokia, she set it to Franz Liszt's Liebestraum number no. 3. And that's a song that I, I grew up... I haven't yet learned how to play it. I learned and then I forgot it. But uh, that's the song that, I, that made me know that this... I really want to know how to play what this thing is. I actually didn't know it was called a piano. Then, I had Kanye West's song, Homecoming, and it has a very, very catchy piano line. If I could play that for you, it, it sounds like this. I knew for sure I wanted to play whatever instrument that was. So I was, I, was out, I was in class seven, and I borrowed a pair of shades. I had gone to the cyber to print some of my assignments to go back to school with. And on going back, because I studied at Carroll Academy in Nakuru, I had assignments that I, I had to submit. And in the cyber cafe, I happened to see Kanye West, and I asked the person to burn a CD for me and put all of Kanye West's music. So I went to school, and the thing that we'd do, the people who used to live in Nairobi would be put in one matatu, and then we'd have like someone who's, in, who's the co-driver in charge of the mixtape and stuff like that. So that was me with my burnt CD with canoeist things and a few songs which I, I thought were interesting. So I borrowed Shades, and I saw a photo of Kanye in the cyber, and I thought, man, since I really admire this guy with the Shades, because he, he had some Shades on, I was like, I look like this guy in my head. So I went back to primary school, and I asked my friend, my good friend Zipora Wamboi, who do I look like? And um, she was like, uh, where, where? And I was like, just, just guess, just think, think, think again, think again. It starts with a K. And then she was just like, where, where? And then I was like, Kanye, Kanye, Kanye. So I asked her, si kai kama Kanye West? And she was like, I took that to be a big yes. So I carried this mentality and I did very well knowing that I, I am a fly short version of Kanye. And I carried this mentality through high school and I passed very well and I was admitted to the Alliance High School. And so we'd have benchmarking. Every other school wanted to come to Bush and see what happens in Bush, what makes this gentleman pass. So in Form 1, uh, Ladies from Chalks, Limuru Girls High School had come for benchmarking. Apparently, one of my friends, George Wayne, knew a chick who had gone to Limuru Girls, and fortunately, she had come for benchmarking. So during prep, they brought her over. So I went to sit with my good friend, a very good uh, writer as well. He's called uh, Moigai, Daniel Patrick. So as we were seated, I couldn't focus on the sums I was working on because I was trying to, to see how can, how can this pretty lady at the back just for a moment just gaze at the glory that, that I am. And how, like, wh why would she deny herself? Why would the backbenchers deny her the chance to meet Kanye? And 
an opportunity arose. Suddenly, it was hot. Remember, Alliance is in Kikuyu, and it rarely gets hot there. Anyways, it was hot. And the lady at the back, I don't know if she shouted or if I just overheard the conversation, but she said, it's hot in here. Can someone open the window? There I was. I was like, this is my chance. Maybe she can't see me because she's seated behind me, and she came in after I had already settled. So I knew this was my opportunity, and I wanted to open the window. I wanted to just to open the window so that she remembers that a celebrity did that for her. But my friend Daniel Patrick was feeling cold. We're in Kikuyu. It's like 8.30 p.m., 30 minutes to go towards the end of prep. He didn't want the window to be opened, as, at least as my memory recalls it. So in this, in this tough tussle, it looked like I'm the one who didn't want the window to be opened because I was standing, I was dramatic. I'm not, I'm not a dramatic person, I mean... You know that by now, yes? Okay. So it looked as if I am the one who did not want the window to be opened. Then she stood from the back, and the whole class went silent. I think it's because a celebrity was standing, and I was about to introduce myself, or she was about to introduce herself, because she just realized, Skanye. Then she said, can, very carefully, can someone tell that black, ugly thing to open the window? I was scarred, and that, to be honest, I might tell you a lot of stories about how I got into music, but that is one of the key drivers which led me into music because music accepted me. And I, I was so, you know, truth is vital, but without love, it's unbearable. I was crushed, and I went to the music center. I started missing my lessons, and I just, to music, I was as constant as the northern star. Anything that came in my way, I was twice as radioactive. No one didn't think to do with that. And I got good. I learned as much theory as I could. I, I picked up any instrument that I could find. I could get into trouble with my teachers. But my teacher, Mr. Lugaka, got a bit patient. He would beat me sometimes, but he really, really shaped the person I am and the musician that I am. So that recovering from that was, has been difficult. It's, it's not been easy in the sense that, you know, that's just like sin. It's not a stain. It's a wound that needs to be healed and, and to be treated. Just so forgiveness was just not enough. But I thank her for that incident because as much as, yes, it plunged me into depths that I wouldn't, that made me so uncomfortable with myself. I, I had a low esteem. I remember I would buy, um, <laughs> so embarrassing, I'd buy the Fair and Lovely the one for men, because I saw the man who was there. I was trying to, you know, at least let me not be black. Let me, you know, the nose, I can't control the shape of the, the bones, but at least I can control the complexion. I finished my high school education in Maranda High School. I will not tell you why, because teacher Jacqueline told us that suspense is very important in a composition. In 2016, I came to Nairobi, the traditional way. First, I rebelled. There was my friend Arancha, an amazing singer, who was performing at Saudi Academy, and she needed an accompanist. Everyone in Nairobi was charging her my 5K, my 7K. So I told her, I will play for you if you like pay my fare. I'm, I'm not in Nairobi, but if you pay my fare, I'll play for you. So they were like, how much does that roughly come to? So me, I was like, my fare is like a thousand bob. So I was like 3,000, just to see if I was serious. The mom sent money. It was like, where can I send the money? And like that. In a day, I convinced my parents, I'm going to Nairobi, I'm going to play music. And I, I had this idea that musicians would play in a hotel and earn 50,000 a night. Uh, that was beautiful. I mean, a man can dream. In 2016, now when I settled in with my friend, with my best friend, I called him at 5 a.m. and told him I'm in Nairobi and I don't have a place to stay and I'm playing Saudi tomorrow. So he told me, just come to my house and give me the directions. For a good part of that year, I lived on 50 shillings in a day. Uh, and I had borrowed so much from my friends that I couldn't take it anymore. Anytime I would ask them for money, they would tell me, and I would tell them, I'll refund you, because I'd see opportunities on my WhatsApp. I just bought myself an Infinix Hot Note, X551. It was an expensive phone at the time. <laughs> at 11,500, and I had, a, I had a phone, so I'd look for these opportunities in these WhatsApp groups, churches saying they want to pay someone 2,000, 2,500, and I'd see that and be like, this would sort me out for like, what, three months, whatever. And 
So it got to a point, all these opportunities would flop. It got to a point where someone, I'd borrow someone money and they just tell me, Achukua tu say lazima ulipe. It went on like that until one day I hadn't eaten for three days and said, I will go and look for work today. I must get a job. I still thought musicians earned 50,000 playing piano in a hotel. I got into school, into campus, and now I had to juggle. Things opened up and I started teaching because I'd been teaching before, but now I started teaching for a living. And I had to juggle that because I have a course on this side, but I also have to live in the city. So I have to juggle between consulting, music education, performance, just trying to make ends meet. And the years went well. I eventually managed to play at a big hotel that I played for for a very long time until 2020 came. It was when the year started and things started looking hazy, I got a phone call. That was actually towards the end of last year. I got a phone call that I will not be playing that gig again. So this gig, which was paying some of my bills, had gone. At the time, I had helped a group to audition for the old mutual uh, competition that was in South Africa, and they were taken. So I was supposed to go with them as a music director. At the same time, my parents were going through so much, and I felt like I needed to go and make money so that I could help the family. I decided to drop out of school. And this was in fourth year uh, with only one semester left. And I remember everything was just coming apart. And w one week to the show, they, after everything was processed, I had to get a passport. I got all my papers sorted. They said they were going to sort out the visa. Then suddenly, they couldn't accept me to go because something to do with the numbers. I was just a music director and I wasn't an active performer. So everything was just falling apart and then came COVID. And everything just came a cropper. But in everything that was happening, I didn't lose hope. I was just, I need to forge through. And it, gave, it kept me in touch with myself. I accepted parts of me that I never thought I would. I got vulnerable. I got vulnerable with God. I learned to trust him more. I became closer to my friends. And... With time, things, as much as things never got easier, we just decided to make the best out of our lives. 2020 was going to be my year, I remember, because I got, I got jobs based on God's favor. I, I was, people were calling me to go and teach in big schools and teach a lot of people. People only wanted me to teach their kids piano. And it was, go it was going well. So COVID came and life has to go on. Everybody was kind of sad, and I, I decided to share the joy that I had. So I decided that every morning at 11 a.m., I would sit at my piano with a very big mug, a one-liter mug, written Best Friends, and I would play hymns and music upon request on my Facebook page to anyone who cared to listen. We started with eight followers. Then my good friend Mutangili saw, one, saw my clips and he said he'd like to jump in. And I'd really wanted to play with him. So we started doing it at his house, sometimes at my house, and we were invited in various places. My going beyond story is during this COVID period specifically, we've managed to put out close to 40 hours of hymns to spread joy and hope to families. We've, under our page, Hymns of Faith, we get messages and calls from families telling us we've never been able to pray together as a family, but today in the afternoon, we sat around our television with our parents and we watched your show, and it was such a blessing. So please don't stop. People would tell us, I would struggle with exercise, with the kind of music to use for my exercise, and I haven't exercised in a while, but listening to your playlist helped me to exercise today. They would tell us, I have not been able to pray in such a long time, but listening to your songs helped me to, to pray. This is the year, amidst everything that's been happening, this is the year also where I am on this very stage, which is an embodiment of all my dreams. When we were in Form 2 with my best friend Leroy, we wanted to play this specific piano, because we had seen it at the Classical Fusion Arena at uh, Uhuru Gardens, it must have been. I wanted to play at Michael Joseph Center because I saw one of my icons, Aaron Rimbui, perform on this very piano. And I, I never knew I would ever get to speak and engage this soon, let alone being a part of Engage. But this is the year where I've been chosen to be the band leader for Engage. It is no mean feat and I do not take it for granted.
I have also established Maskani, which is Kenya's current only jazz orchestra, and we are just trying to bring in the culture and spread joy and hope through music. I don't know what your going beyond story is, but whatever it is that you might have gone through in the past, whatever it is that you think is holding you back, I'd like to tell you a Luo saying that we usually use when you want to start something or when you're afraid. It says chaka chaka. Just start, just do it. It's, a, it's best equivalent translation will be Nike's motto, just do it. That's what I want to tell you, that it doesn't have to be something grandiose. There are people who've st stood on these stages who run big companies and lovely initiatives. But you can change your life a step at a time. You could decide to brush your teeth more gently and more carefully. You could decide to go to bed early. You could decide to read a little bit more. Your story is equally as important. I do not look like Kanye West. And I have made peace with that. But I am willing to continue spreading the joy and love that is this beautiful thing we have called life through music and whatever it is that I do. As a music educator, I look at changing the lives of all my students and ensuring they turn into responsible people. I teach at Nysula School, at St. Christopher's, and I also do private home lessons. So I am really grateful to engage for this lovely opportunity and for making my dreams come true. Asante sana.